Which Odd Couple star became a parent at 77 years old? Which actor was sued for palimony? And who has been credited for helping to catapult Robin Williams into stardom? These are just a few of the interesting tidbits we'll uncover today as we catch up with the original cast of The Odd Couple. Thanks for tuning back in to Hollywood Revisited. My name is Amelia and we've got a lot to cover, so let's get rolling. Number 1. Tony Randall Tony was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma as Arthur Leonard Rosenberg. He attended Tulsa Central High School, then Northwestern University, and later New York City's Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater. After serving in World War II, he returned to New York City to continue his acting career and appeared in several Broadway plays. Randall made his first film appearance in the 1957 movie Oh Men, Oh Women and received a Golden Globe nomination for his role in Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter. He worked extensively in the 1960s and appeared in various films such as The Alphabet Murderers and Hello Down There. He also had a reoccurring role on the TV show Mr. Peepers in the 1950s. In 1970, Tony landed his most famous role as Felix Unger in The Odd Couple. He earned Emmy nominations for each season and eventually won in 1975. He also starred in The Tony Randall Show and Love, Sydney. Throughout his career, he had small roles in several films, including The King of Comedy and Gremlins 2, The New Batch. Randall met Florence Gibbs in 1938 while they attended college together. The couple never had children, but they remained together until her death in 1992. Tony went on to marry Heather Harlan in 1995 after meeting in a play in New York. He was 75 and she was 50 years his junior at the time of their wedding. Despite their unconventional relationship, they had two children and Tony finally became a father in his late 70s. Randall was known for his appreciation of fine art. In an effort to bring classical theater back to Broadway, he founded and acted as the director of the National Actors Theater in 1991. He was an avid collector of modern art, opera recordings, and antiques. He studied voice for 32 years and was in the Metropolitan Opera Association. He even took ballet classes and performed at a semi-professional level. Tony passed away on May 17, 2004 from pneumonia following a coronary bypass surgery. Number 2. Jack Klugman Jack was born in Philadelphia in 1922 the youngest of six children to Russian Jewish immigrant parents. After serving in World War II, he attended Carnegie Mellon University, where he was told he was better suited to be a truck driver than an actor. Nevertheless, Klugman pursued acting and made his Broadway debut in 1952 in the play Golden Boy. He went on to appear in numerous television series and films, including 12 Angry Men and Cry Terror. In 1965, Klugman replaced Walter Matthau in the lead role of Oscar Madison in the Broadway production of The Odd Couple. He reprised his role in the 1970 television adaptation of the play, which earned him two Primetime Emmy Awards and a Golden Globe. After The Odd Couple, Klugman starred in the medical drama Quincy M.E. from 1976 to 1983, for which he was nominated for four Primetime Emmy Awards. Jack served on the board of directors of New York's National Actors Theater alongside his co-star and personal friend, Tony Randall. They had worked together 15 years before The Odd Couple on a live TV show called Appointment with Adventure, and they were able to continue working together periodically after the show as well. Plugman was an avid thoroughbred racing fan since the age of 15 and owned a horse named Jacqueline Plugman, who finished third in the 1980 Kentucky Derby. He also owned a farm with 100 horses and had a popcorn franchise named Jack's Corn Crib. Jack was first married to actress Brett Summers in 1956, and they had two children together. Brett played Blanche, Oscar's wife on the show. It was reported that Summers and Klugman separated in 1974, but remained legally married until her death. However, California court records show that their divorce was actually finalized in 1977. Klugman moved in with actress Barbara Nugas after his separation from Brett for 18 years. Their relationship ended in 1992, but he had already started seeing his next wife, Peggy Crosby, in 1988. Barbara sued Jack for $5 million in palimony, but eventually lost the suit. He finally married Peggy shortly after Summers died in 2008. 
nearly 30 years after they had first started dating. Klugman was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1974 and underwent surgery, which left him with a quiet, raspy voice. Nevertheless, he continued to act on stage and television, regaining limited strength in his voice in later years. He passed away from prostate cancer in 2012 at the age of 90. Number 3. Albert Molinaro Born with the name Umberto Francisco Molinaro, Albert was born in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He was the ninth of ten children in a family of Italian immigrants. He started his career as a union leader at the Vincent McCall Furniture Spring Factory and later as a special assistant to the Kenosha city manager. However, he left that promising career to pursue his dream of becoming an actor. Albert had various jobs including working at a hobby shop, animating, managing a variety store, and collecting bills for the Collection Agency of America while he worked on his acting career. He appeared in over 100 commercials and had a 10-year deal with Encore Frozen Foods as their spokesperson. Albert's acting career took off when he was cast in the national commercial for the Volvo 140. He got his first big break playing Murray the Cop in The Odd Couple, and then moved on to fill the 10-year role that he was best known for as Owl, the malt shop owner in Happy Days, and its spin-off Joni Loves Chachi. He is also credited for helping catapult Robin Williams to stardom. There came a time when Happy Days creator Gary Marshall was looking to fill the role of a Martian character for the show. He asked the cast if they knew anyone who might take the part, and Al recommended Robin, with whom he had taken an improv class. Not only did Robin get the part on Happy Days, but starred in the Mork and Mindy spin-off which lasted four seasons. In 1948, Albert married Jacqueline Martin and the couple adopted a son named Michael. He later married Betty Setios in 1981 and had two stepchildren, Jim and Victoria Setios. He had a total of six grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Unfortunately, Albert was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in the mid-1990s and passed away on October 30, 2015. Despite his illness, he continued to personally answer fan mail until his health no longer allowed for it. Number 4. Penny Marshall Penny Marshall was born in Manhattan, New York to Marjorie, a tap dancer, and Anthony, Tony Marshall, an industrial film director. Penny was the younger sister of Gary Marshall and Ronnie Hallen, both actors and filmmakers. Penny attended a private girls' high school in New York and then went to the University of New Mexico for two and a half years. Penny met Michael Henry when they were both attending the University of New Mexico, and they married in 1963 on the same day that JFK was shot. They spent their honeymoon watching the funeral. They welcomed a child, Tracy, who followed in her mom's footsteps and became an actress and a director. Penny and Michael didn't last, though. They divorced two years after they had Tracy. Penny started her film career with a movie debut in How Sweet It Is in 1968. She got her big television break as Oscar secretary Myrna on The Odd Couple. She also played Mary Richards' neighbor Paula on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Penny's fame skyrocketed with her role as Laverne on the hit television show Laverne and Shirley, a spin-off from Happy Days. Marshall went on to marry Rob Rayner in 1971, who adopted her daughter Tracy as his own and helped raise her. Their union lasted 10 years but also ended in divorce. Following their relationship, Penny had a brief romance with Art Garfunkel of Simon & Garfunkel. He credits her with helping him through his depression at the time. Penny was also known for her directing skills. She was the first female to direct a movie that grossed over $100 million in the United States, with Big in 1988 and 1992's A League of Their Own, made her the first female director with two movies grossing over $100 million. Penny passed away at the age of 75 in Los Angeles, California. Number 5. Eleanor Donahue Eleanor Donahue, born in Tacoma, Washington as Mary Eleanor Donahue, has been stealing hearts since she was a child. She began tap dancing at 16 months old and was signed by Universal Studios at the age of five, appearing in films such as Mr. Big and Honeymoon Lodge in 1943. In the 1950s, she gained nationwide recognition as the oldest daughter in the hit TV show Father Knows Best, playing the role of Betty Anderson. In the 1970s, she made a comeback with her role as Miriam in The Odd Couple. She also lent her voice to commercials and cartoons in the 1990s. 
She had a reoccurring role on Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman and several soap operas including Santa Barbara and Days of Our Lives. Eleanor was first married to Richard Smith, but they divorced a few years after. She then married TV executive producer Harry Ackerman in 1962. They had four sons together. Unfortunately, Eleanor lost Harry in 1991. She later married Lou Genoverno, and they are still together today. She published a memoir in 1998 entitled In the Kitchen with Eleanor Donahue, which includes her memories of Hollywood and over 150 of her top grade recipes. Number 6. Gary Wahlberg Gary Wahlberg was born in Buffalo, New York in 1921. Wahlberg began his Hollywood career with a minor role in Philco Television Playhouse. He also appeared in numerous TV shows from the 1950s to the 1990s, including Lassie, Gunsmoke, Star Trek, and Columbo. He was best known for his role as Homer in The Odd Couple and was Frank Monaghan in Quincy M.E., during which he was able to work with Jack Klugman again. He reprised the role in the 1993 TV movie The Odd Couple Together Again, which was his final acting appearance before retiring from the industry. Wahlberg was married and divorced twice before marrying his third wife, Florence M. Apostol, on September 12, 1987. He passed away in March 2012 at the age of 90 due to chronic pulmonary disease and congestive heart failure. Number 7. Janice Hansen Janice Hansen was born and raised in New York. She came from a small family with only one other sister. Hansen was a former Playboy Bunny and Broadway performer before her screen debut in Car 54 Where Are You? She went on to appear in minor roles in several television series until she was cast as Gloria on The Odd Couple. In the finale of season 4, Felix is surprised when Gloria shows up to be photographed for Playboy magazine, where she donned a bunny costume again. After her time on The Odd Couple, she went on to play a few more roles and her last credited screen appearance was in 1982. In 2002, Janice founded Hanson Management, a talent management company in Los Angeles, serving as an agent, coach, and manager. Hanson was married twice, first to Joseph Roland Mikolash, an actor, until his death in 1996. They had two children together. She remarried in 2002 to Andrew Michael Romer, Hansen passed away in Los Angeles in November 2021 at the age of 81. Number 8. Joan Hotchkiss Joan Hotchkiss was born in Los Angeles and raised in San Marino. Hotchkiss studied at Smith College and Bank Street Teachers College, where she earned a master's degree in early childhood education. After teaching for a few years, she switched to acting and became a lifetime member of the Actors Studio and the Dramatists Guild. Hotchkiss made her Broadway debut in Advise and Consent and went on to play various roles in television, film, and theater over the next several decades. She was best known for playing Nancy Cunningham in The Odd Couple and Ellen in the Emmy-winning series My World and Welcome to It. Hotchkiss was also a talented writer beginning with a one-woman play Legacy in the 1970s. She went on to write and produce two solo performance pieces her work toured in the United States and won awards at the Edinburgh National Festival Fringe. Hotchkiss was married to Robert Foster from 1958 to 1967 and has one child, Paula. She had a lifelong interest in psychology and even worked as a part-time paraprofessional in aggression training at the Institute of Group Psychotherapy. Hotchkiss passed away in 2022 at the age of 95 due to congestive heart failure. Number 9. Richard Stahl Richard Stahl was born in Detroit, he served in the U.S. Army during the Korean War, and when he returned he studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York, and began his acting career in off-Broadway productions in the 1950s. Stahl met his wife, actress Catherine Ish, while performing on stage. They got married in 1959 and had two children. He and Catherine relocated to San Francisco in the 1960s and they became members of an improvisational comedy group, The Committee. Stahl's film credits include High Anxiety, 9 to 5, The American President, and The Ghost of Mississippi. He appeared in numerous television shows including The Partridge Family, Laverne and Shirley, Family Ties, Married with Children, and Empty Nest. Stahl suffered from Parkinson's disease for a decade before he passed away in 2006 at the age of 74. Number 10. Brett Summers 
As mentioned previously, Brett Summers was Jack Klugman's first wife. She chose her stage name based on a beloved character and to honor her mother by using her maiden name. Summers moved to New York City at the age of 18 to pursue a career in acting. She married businessman Robert H. Klein in 1948 and had one child, Leslie Klein. Although there isn't much information available, we do know that the marriage ended in divorce. She later married Jack Klugman, and after their divorce, she never remarried. Summers began her career in theater, but she was best known for her appearances as a panelist on The Match Game. She was not originally considered for the celebrity panel, but was brought on after Jack suggested they have her on. She remained a regular panelist for the rest of the show's nine-year network and syndicated run. Summers denied having cancer for years, but in 2004, her son confirmed the diagnosis. She died on September 15, 2007, at the age of 83, at her home in Westport, Connecticut. Thanks for revisiting the cast of The Odd Couple with us. Let us know in the comments below who your favorite cast member is and why. Now the big question is, which of these two videos are you going to watch next? We think you'll enjoy the one on the right, but the one on the left just might surprise you. Either way, it's your choice. See you in the next one.